My name is Vlad, and I am a Clojure developer. My history with Clojure starts with game development in Flash, which used ActionScript. And uh, I started as a game developer, and I wanted to make a, a multiplayer games, so I decided to learn Java. I liked doing Java, and then eventually I... At some point, and I switched from game development to more enterprise Java development because I felt that game development is too chaotic and unpredictable. And uh, turns out in enterprise is the same. I love that you say that you come from the action script world. That's also how I went from static website development into yeah a more user uh, interface approach. Uh, you're from the same generation who created those annoying skip intro animations for websites? <laughs> no, I was uh, creating uh, farm games for uh, oh, okay. social media websites, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. a bit different thing. I jumped from ActionScript to Java and, and, and C Sharp in between because they are very similar. Um, did ActionScript, Adobe somehow, somehow missed the boat? Uh, could they have been one of the leading languages at this time? I think so. It's really sad that they decided to discontinue Flash development because it was mm -hmm. such a wonderful technology. And I think if they had proper funding, they could have been uh, today's, I don't know, Rive. Mm -hmm. So you said you went to Clojure. I have to be honest, that's one of those languages I've never used before and I don't really know. Uh, we talked in this interview series already about the combination of Java, VIX and Scala and, and Kotlin. Mm -hmm. Can you compare Clojure with the other ones and, and why you prefer Clojure? I discovered Clojure because I was burnt out by Scala. When I was going from ActionScript to Java, I was uh, excited about the presence of generics that I could use to make my code more streamlined, something like that. Mm -hmm. After that, there was Scala, which promised uh, more of that. But uh, I think while more of generics definitely happened, I sort of got further away from doing actual stuff, and instead I was mostly was trying to find ways to express my like solutions to problems with types so they like compile and uh, invalid states are mm -hmm. unrepresentable and uh, at some point it felt like I'm I'm just doing something wrong like this isn't what I should be doing like I should do, should be doing uh, an application or a project that is for users, but not, but I was mostly spending time Fixing trying to figure code. out how to, <laughs> how to type the thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's where I discovered Clojure, and um, it's a completely different language, which is dynamic, uh, compiles to Java byte code, so it's performant, but uh, like it is, it's a uh, it's a very different thing uh, compared to languages like Scala or Kotlin, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also a Lisp. And I'm, I wouldn't say that I am a Lisp enthusiast, but I I like Clojure because it has REPL, and uh, REPL is a like a development tool that allows you to immediately like execute the code you type and see the results. This thing I was actually missing a lot when doing a kind of development. So I've been usually in closure for, I think it's almost nine years and uh, I don't plan to switch to anything <laughs> else <laughs> so far. But recently I've been using Java uh, 21 and there, I think it, Java language is becoming much more nicer with the records and sealed interfaces and uh, um, some other minor syntax mm -hmm. uh, improvements like instance of that create a local binding uh, of the expected type. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. But what we see in Java indeed is influenced by all these other great languages and and. 
it's not that they just copy it, but slowly they integrate a lot of these improvements in other languages into Java. Mm. And, and the Java 25 is yeah, a completely different beast than Java 8 was. So um, mm -hmm. for people who are still stuck on Java 8, please take a look at, uh, at one of the latest versions. I found you because you have this, this GitHub project, uh, which is called CLJ Avix. So it's a combination of Clojure and Java Avix. Uh, what is the goal of this project exactly? For the context, I work as a developer of a game editor, like an editor application for a game engine, which is written mm -hmm. in JavaFX. Before that, I was writing Clojure script, a dialect of Clojure that is compiled to JavaScript. I was writing a web application uh, with React, and it was very nice. I think it's a very nice paradigm. So when I got the job... Um, a default and I looked at the source code, I, I realized that I'm I'm gonna miss that and I don't want to, to lose it. Uh, so I wanted to create a React-like library for JavaFix so that I could have the same experience where I can just create a function that from data return view and uh, the rest will be done automatically. Uh, that's the first reason why I decided to do it. And there is another one. I wanted to create a REPL for Clojure, which is like with uh, more features. And uh, just to explain, REPL stands for read eval print loop, uh, which is a standard way of uh, like working with Lisps. And I didn't like the print part. Because you get uh, you get back just a text, and uh, you don't you can't really do anything with it other than read it. Is it something you can show? So if people never used uh, Clojure before, how the code looks and how you can combine it with JavaFX? If you're talking about just the Clojure language itself, so it's a Lisp uh, which places the functions at the front and then the arguments, and then you mm -hmm. compose multiple calls. Um, like that together. Hello world enclosure looks like this. Print line. Hello world. Okay, and it returns nil, and it also prints uh, hello world into the console. And how do you now combine this with JavaFX? I wrote this CLJFX library, and we have to import it first. Okay, so what we're gonna do? Right, execute some code on JavaFX thread. Yeah. And create a component, and then we will write a map that describes uh, this component. So it's gonna be stage, and we are showing it. And the stage needs a scene. And a scene needs a root, and the root could be a label. This is going to be our CLJ fix hello world. Let's see if it works. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's a, a bit small, small, but it works. <laughs> very small window, but maybe we could make it a little bit larger with styling. Fix one size 20. Maybe we also could add some padding. Okay, that, that's a bit okay. better. Yeah. Maybe we could so. make it even even bigger for, for the demo. Okay. And Here you can probably define look. also the size of the scene somewhere. Uh, yeah. The, the whole window. I, bit. I don't remember exactly where is it on the on a stage. Okay, so and this here is just a just a hash map. So if I if I evaluate just just this thing, it's just a data structure with mm -hmm. the, some nested data structures. I have to admit I like your flow because while you're typing, you immediately see your result. Mm -hmm. So so the, the built and run and definitely for for user interface, I think this is a very easy flow that you can almost. Uh, immediately execute it. Uh, yeah. If you want, I can also show you a, a bit more of React-like features that uh, that Clojure Fix has. 
instead of a class reference, uh, you could use other extension features. For example, the state, which is a local state, and we can start with zero. It's like typical React example of a button that updates its text when you click on it. Okay, so we, and this is done with the, we just functions. So in Clojure, this is a function definition. Mm -hmm. And um, here it's arguments that are immediately destructured. So it re receives a hash map and I extract keys like state and swap state. And then I, let's make it a button and keep this stuff that we took from the label. I think it all should work and maybe yeah. an, add on action, which is just a closure function. We will receive an event here, action event, but we uh, don't really need it. Um, and we will just increment uh, the state on every click. And the text would be clicked state times. Okay, so we created a simple function, so like we can call it like that state zero. Yes, and it will just return this hash map. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the text is clicked zero times. Okay, and when it's used from CLJFX, I hope it will work. Yeah. So you you get like a leave leave updated application that is completely reactive and all the local state is like managed for you and you can just compose your application from functions that take data in and return data out. You made me very curious about, you, you mentioned it as a side note, I work for this uh, game company and we make an, a game editor in Java Fix, so I definitely want to see it. Eh? Here is the default editor. Um, Default is a game engine that uses Lua, so we have like a text editor for Lua code, which we wrote ourselves uh, using JavaFX Canvas. And we also integrate, for example, LSP, so you could, you could, uh, you, you also have features like um, go to definition and usages. And uh, other interesting things I can show is Markdown Viewer. It's not a JavaFX web view. We used to have Markdown Viewer as a JavaFX web view, but at some point we rewrote it because it was only used for rendering Markdown files. It was adding too much space, like the build size was increasing by 30 megabytes. So we rewrote Markdown Viewer and it's now using basically a VBox of text flow, text mm -hmm. flows. That was an interesting project and uh, I'm happy that it works. So this is Markdown rendered yeah. by Java Fix. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, default. Is it a tool to write games in a specific language or, or using some kind of game uh, engine? Default is, a, is a both a game engine and an editor. So mm -hmm. default is a game engine and you write your game code using Lua and then you can build it for basically any platform, desktop, mm -hmm. mobile, web, consoles. Uh, we do it all. Can you show maybe some uh, game or an example game which is part of default? Uh -huh. I can make a project sample game. Uh, maybe some asteroids. Okay, yeah, so here we open a sample game and it has a description and hopefully it works. First time right. What we're seeing now is the game is created in a JavaFX 
editor. The engine is in another language. The engine is written in, in C, like C++. I don't work on the engine. But it's great to hear that although you have a game engine in C, C++, you chose for Java and Java VIX for the editor. Um, is the reason that it's easier to build an editor with a tool like that? The reason the GDK was picked was its uh, capabilities for multi-threading programming mm -hmm. and how easy it is to write. Like build pipelines that produce the final bundle of the game from mm -hmm. initial resources. So the build pipeline is in Java and uh, for the same reason we decided to make the editor in Java. And mm -hmm. Java Fix is the best choice of thing for writing the editor. What's the goal with your closure project? Do you want to is it mainly to improve your own workflow and the tools that you are building? Uh, are you sharing it? Are you looking for contributors or users? Mm -hmm. What is a bit the goal of this, this GitHub project? Okay, so I guess that's a bit egoistic for me, but yes, I did it for myself mainly. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I accept contributions, though, though in the years that it's been released for, I didn't get that much. Mm -hmm. With this video, we want to promote it a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. show people it exists. And see yeah, how this evolves and how Clojure and Java VIX together can grow maybe and, and see how, how they can evolve. What evolutions do you hope will happen within Java VIX itself or Java? I hope um, that keyboard shortcut handling will improve on Linux mm -hmm. because we still have issues with, with Linux users uh, I guess, I mean, Linux is a zoo, so uh, I guess you're bound to have some inconsistencies between different distributions, different keyboard layouts, but we, mm -hmm. we are having some issues there. Yeah. And can, can Clojure and Java grow closer together? I think they are already close enough, mm -hmm. because Clojure compiles to Java bytecode. How much closer can you get? <laughs> but yeah. I, think, I actually think Java might be moving a little bit in the direction of closure because closure was, I think, or maybe the first language that introduced immutable data structures as a like first class primitive uh, of the language. And uh, now Java is actively acquiring the same capabilities. Uh, okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, your work and sharing your, your project on GitHub and uh, looking forward to how it evolves. Yes.